Welcome back and thank you very much for your time. Uh, we're getting into our news review segment. The Daily Graphic starts us off. It says, Amend airline that bans motorcycles from operating as taxis and government must tread cautiously in PDS issue power producers. Ghana, Burkina Faso open talks to formalize trade relations and government chases 190 million compact funds in spite of agreement suspension, minority demands concession termination. It comes with a photo of Energy Minister Mr. John Peter Mill with the Finder newspaper 30 day PDS probe underway. According to the Information Minister, talks with Millennium Challenge Corporation in progress. Republic Bank's profit up by 75%, assets cross 3 billion Ghana cities. Africa beyond aid hinges on intra regional trade, according to President Kofado. And Agra pushes for massive private investment in agriculture. Dentra, Hema wins palace injunction case. Okay, congratulations to him. The Ghanaian Times, Frederick Emisa, Professor A. Al Hassan, appointed CEOs of NTC and GBC. Government launches full-scale investigation into breaches by PDS. And guard against wasteful spending, President tells African government. The BNFT, Gridco to rake in 12 million US dollars annually from power exports. Nigeria's uh, uh, let's use our resources to move Africa beyond aid precedent. And uh, the Daily Graphic finally says that, uh, well, uh, I, think, I think we saw this one already. Well, okay. So my guest this morning, Mr. Richard Ahiagba, he is the uh, Deputy Communications Director, one of uh, the PT Communications Director for the MPP. Rich, welcome. How are you doing, Chief? Quite well. And the Honorable Alassane Suhini uh, is a man to speak up with up, up, uh, Tamale North. Honorable, Tamale. welcome. Thank Good you. Morning. How are you doing? Um, how are the grounds? It's well. The grounds, the grounds are well. Shall are you ready for the, the primaries? Yes, definitely. I mean, the party is cheering up. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be on 24th of this month. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm very sure that. Um, they're very good, uh, you know, executives of our party mm -hmm. uh, at the polling station level, at the branch level, um, are going to reward, you know, uh, dedication and loyalty mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the service of the party. Mm -hmm. I, I've, we've been up there in your constituency. We've seen you've covered a lot of grounds, uh, social intervention programs mm -hmm. and all of that. The people want more. Will you give them more? That's the question. <laughs> Obviously. I mean, um, this job of being an MP, um, is not an event it's a process mm. and especially when you start uh, the way i started in opposition mm. less than two years uh, it's impossible for you to be able to cover all the ground it's impossible for you to be able to you know um, meet all the expectations mm. but what is obvious is that um, what has been started and mm. what is happening mm. and the interventions that have been made in mm. the area of health, in the area of education, in the area of even jobs, in the area of um, you know support for women to do business, uh, it, it gives hope mm. that um, if, for example, the NDC is in power, more of such mm. is going to you know uh, come. And I'm sure with time, um, all the ground will be covered right. appropriately. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about PDS and ECG. Yesterday, the Minister for Information briefed the press about, or updated the press about the ongoing uh, inquiry or probe, uh, 30 days, that's what he says is going to uh, last, okay? But let's put the conversation in perspective. First, let's hear from the Minister for Information, and then we'll listen to the minority side yesterday in Parliament they had something to say as well. They have been raising red flags, actually, prior to uh, this announcement that was made for the suspension of the concession between ECG and PDS. But first, take a look at Mr. Kujopo Nkrumah, his Minister for Information. Government reiterates that this breach was discovered by the due diligence of the Ghanaian authorities through ECG and with the support of state agencies. And here specifically, I want to share with you a few details. For the avoidance of doubt, the provision of the payment guarantee has always been a condition precedent and was never made or changed into a condition subsequent as is being speculated by some persons. Secondly, the initial due diligence led by the transaction advisors did not detect anything wrong with the payment guarantees. Third thing is that it took a second level of checks, this time led by the Ghana side that initially yielded the first 
responses from our court that was confirming the guarantee. Next is that it took a third level of checks by the Ghana side, which then detected that there were anomalies within our court, thereby triggering the fourth level of checks. And it is this fourth level of checks which involved sending an initial team from the Ghana mission in Qatar to engage with our court officials for further verification. This fourth level further proved the anomalies and even suggested some untoward action, which is now the subject of the full-scale inquiry. And as a matter of agency, we insist on the following five-point demands. One, like we said, terminate the concession agreement with immediate effect. Identify, and not only identify, but go ahead to prosecute those responsible for this fraudulent guarantee, as was confirmed by no less a person than the Minister of Energy. And not just identify and <coughs> prosecute those in charge of this fraudulent guarantee, we must also identify, smoke out, and prosecute all government officials who collaborated in this scandal as far as the guarantee and the concession is concerned. Ensure full refund of monies and interest thereof collected by PDS during this five-month period as a result of this fraudulent activity. Dissolve the current ECG board and appoint a competent nonpartisan board that has the capacity to ensure that ECG continues to serve the people of Ghana in a much more effective manner. Restructure the current ECG management and ensure that they perform in an efficient and effective manner. So you heard uh, the two gentlemen, the Minister for Information and the spokesperson also on the energy issues, a former Deputy Minister for Power, Mr. John Jinapo, speaking on behalf of the minority. I'll start with you, Mr. Richard Ahabba. It, it does appear that it's become difficult to explain what's happening. The questions keep popping up. There are many answers that are coming, but even more questions keep popping up. For example, somebody is asking, uh, why we had to make certain conditions precedent, uh, conditions subsequent, and now that has come to bite us. In fact, when you took 46 conditions precedent to Parliament, um, and then you take it to Cabinet and you swap it, and you make it conditions subsequent, you, some say you drove us into a ditch. Is that a position the government wants to agree with? Uh, Johnny, good morning to you and uh, to my good brother here and to your viewers. Uh, uh, I'm not sure uh, what is becoming difficult to defend, except I see a difficulty uh, on the part of the NDC trying to force uh, some kind of uh, untruth mm. on the matter to try to posit a case to say that really this is a scandal of a certain proportion. Is it not a scandal? Uh, now, let me begin with what you have said. Mm. Changing condition uh, precedent mm. to condition subsequent. Mm. Now, you can have your mm. own opinion about things, mm. but you cannot have your own set of facts. Okay. Now, what the NDC is doing... What, what I'm saying to you is, yes. is actually by the Committee on Mines and Energy in Parliament. Yes. That's not NDC. That's the committee in Parliament comprising... I didn't mention that. I'm telling NDC you what... NDC. Because you show us a press conference mm. by uh, the NDC. Right. Okay. The Minister for Information mm. was very, very clear in saying that the condition... Mm -hmm. to do with the guarantee mm -hmm. which is at issue has always been conditioned precedent, hasn't changed. Mm. You understand? 
So the argument or the discussion about condition precedent being subsequent changed does not even arise. It was not part of the 16 that no. was swapped. No, it's not. It, it was not part. No, okay. the minister was clear on but, that. But you agree that certain conditions which should have been precedent. But were Johnny, that is not a discussion. What is brought us here is a particular situation, and that issue in question has not changed. Of guarantee. Of guarantee remains condition precedent and was condition precedent. It hasn't changed. Okay. Now, if I show you a letter this morning mm, procured from a, a legitimate institution or mm -hmm. company mm -hmm. with a signature on it, by looking at it, can you tell that a signature on it mm -hmm. by an individual who worked at that institution is fraudulent? You can't. But as time goes on and you are doing your continuous check, mm. you come to a point where you found out that individual who actually works at that institution did not have the capacity to sign that document. Mm. And when you learn that as a government, then you suspend the agreement. So that's so, what so, we're so, talking so, about. So let's understand it in basic terms. Mm -hmm. You have your hard earned money. You want to rent a two bedroom apartment. Um, don't you, simplify it, though. Well, I'm, I'm saying, I'm just trying to make it all, as all understand Yeah, but that, it. don't simplify it. So in you have your money. Mm -hmm. You need accommodation. You see a two-bedroom apartment somewhere. You think that you want it. And you go knock on the door, and somebody who's supposed to be keeping guard over it comes up and says, I am the property owner. You don't verify whether he is indeed a property owner and whether he has the wherewithal to give you the... Uh, accommodation you are looking for and yet you hand over your money to him he gives you a paper you sign off you move in there somebody comes and says he's actually not the owner so he doesn't have uh, what it takes to give you accommodation is that the situation we found ourselves in no and, no. and now you move to say you want to terminate the tenancy agreement. No, no. So it's not, it's it's not, not, the, it's not, not, it's not the same thing at all. Okay. Uh, so what I'm trying to say very clearly is mm. this, that if unless we get the issues properly lined up, okay. we fall prey to the NDC's distractionary argument that mm. they are making. This, this, is, this is the assets of ECG. I agree. I handed mean, over to PDS. Yes. And we didn't go in to find out whether or not they had the capacity to guarantee but, but the financial condition Johnny, that they needed to satisfy Johnny, before they we got. found out. Okay. That's why the suspension today. We you, found you out. You found out after how many days? After how many days? ECG took over, uh, PDS took over first March. You see, this is what I'm trying to position you to see. Okay. That there is some intentional argument mm -hmm. to take us away from what is substantial. So be, now, uh, let, me, on, let, me, uh, let me understand, Richard. It, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. So ECG, uh, PDS took over in first March. Before first March, yeah. did you satisfy yourself that PDS has this money that you were looking forward for them to inject into our energy sector to improve quality access and pricing and everything? Johnny, did Johnny, you satisfy that? You, you, you know... You are too serious for to fall for this. On that day, when the agreement was signed, the transfer to PDS occurred. The document to ascertain that position was present. You agree? And which document? No, no, no. Was hold on, verified? hold on. Let's proceed. No, no. Please, please, please. You agree that document was present on on the agreement to effect the transfer. And uh, which document was verified? I'm asking you, Johnny. Let's proceed in, lay, in, in the argument no, no, logically. We, we, we will because proceed so, logically. Yes, yes, yes. So just follow. Okay. Okay. What I'm saying is that you ask a question, and I'm trying to answer your question to say, okay. at the time of effecting the transaction, the document to verify their capacity was on the table. Okay. Okay? Mm. Now, subsequently... Ver verified by who? I don't know what you mean, verified by who. But, I mean, How you... They, if you think the individuals that had the letter, they read, they read the letter... See the institution that was registered. When you are looking at this, right, the person who signed the letter uh, mm. is an employee of the company. Okay. Okay? So you have a letter signed, excuse me, a letter signed from the presidency okay. by a known face or a known operative mm. at the presidency. Mm. You take that letter at face value. Now, whilst you are operating, you found out in your checks 
that, oh, this letter from the presidency, true, but then the person who signed it did not have capacity. And that, at that point, you take step to correct. April. And that's what, oh, please, please, let's not do this. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just... Because, no, no. I, if you I, are, think, you, I think that, I think that you, you are suggesting that I am falling into what the NDC is saying. Because, you see, Johnny, but the I'm reason... Saying that, I'm saying that, mm -hmm. Richard, if you have assets, first March, yeah. so March, April, May, June, mm -hmm. July, yeah. five months. Yes. It, it, it suggested that it took us five months to agree that the, the person who signed the letter and the person who actually gave authorization for it was not qualified to do it. And so that nullifies or suspends the agreement we had. But you see, is that the understanding? Hughes, what you are forgetting is this, that the one, two, three, four, seven that you are counting. Mm. It's five, actually. Five mm. that you are counting came as a result of the same person, the government, and government agencies doing continuous check to arrive at that five. Mr. Kujopoku no, says no. that's not correct. Who is Mr. Uh, Kujopoku? He's, he's an uh, energy analyst. He I says, don't speak to Mr. Kujopoku. I speak to what the government position is, okay. which is official. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kujopoku can say anything. In fact, the NDC are saying everything they want to say. Okay. I don't speak to that. That's not fact. That's what I began by telling you, that you can have your own opinion, but you can't have your own set of facts. Mm -hmm. There is one fact, and that's what is put out by the Minister for Information. So the truth is mm -hmm. here that the document procured fraudulently mm. or signed by an individual, allegedly, who did not have capacity to sign a document. Okay. Now, we took the document, effected the transaction on the basis of continuous assessment and investigation, mm. found that that person who signed the letter, as it stands now, did not have the capacity to sign so. So government took the decision to suspend. In fact, if you look, ASEP has not agreed or has always had dissenting views as far as all this transaction is concerned, but they were, they were clear in commending government for taking that step immediately upon realizing to stop that. Now, if we're going to have a serious conversation to come up with ways to improve, because look, ev everything we're talking about here mm. has happened before, or there are instances where these things have happened. In fact, I remember a situation where uh, in the former NDC government we were talking about individuals being uh, issued letter from the presidency to occupy position that the president himself had no understanding of or they don't know about. There were things like that. What's, that what's the correlation? The correlation is that the potential for individuals who do not have capacity to sign documents has happened before their history to it. So that this Under year, the NDC? Please, please. Uh, I'll, I'll, no, which appointment? I think please, please. Sorry, please. But, it's, sorry. but the point, the point <laughs> I'm trying to make is this: <laughs> that what NDC is important, <laughs> what is important, it, it's not even an, an allegation. Richard, but the point I am trying mm. to make to you is this: <laughs> that what has happened here demonstrates the continuous focus and engagement mm. of government institution and government to ensure that whilst we have signed this agreement with PDS, we are not going to sleep, but we are focused and engaged. You remember? Th this, this, remember conti this continuous uh, due diligence or assessment, how much is it costing us? Or the, the consultant is family friendly? I don't, I don't follow. This continuous assessment, yeah. is it for free? Are we doing it for free? How, how do you mean? Is like, it being done? Is the consultant, whoever is helping us to do it, is it doing it for oh, it free? Oh, it, it was through the engagement of ECG. Okay. And so, I mean, well, how is so it So we're not paying for any uh, due diligence. I mean, you know that if you're yeah. doing due diligence, yeah. there must be an expert who has the track record. Well, who well has the I, I, am, I, am not, I am not, in, not in a position to tell you. I'm not in a position to tell you what it's costing us. But okay. what I'm trying to tell you You don't is, know how much uh, it's costing us. I'm not in a position to tell you, and that's, I don't. I don't even think the discussion of cost here even arises. Let's, it, let's, it doesn't. It means nothing to you. No, but Hughes, let's focus because really what we are discussing here is this: that uh, people are alleging something. No, but happened. you are saying that it is taking us five months for you to agree to arrive at this conclusion, and that you are calling for us to commend you for for being able to stop this. I'm asking over the five months when you were vetting the documents, whoever was consulting for you. How much were you paying that person? And it's going to take another 30 days for us to uh, agree or not whether we need to truncate the agreement totally. So you tell me how much, or you don't know, how much is it costing us to, to agree on? That, that is a totally unrelated question. Okay. Uh, and uh, the focus of your discussion here, uh, Hughes, is that 
the PDS agreement has been suspended okay. on account of government and government agencies doing diligence and checking, okay, even after mm. the agreement was signed and PDS is working. And in the midst of all of that, they are focused and following the agreement and found out that there was some anomaly in, the, the, in some of the documents okay. that was submitted. So government did and no on wrong. Account, government did no wrong. We, we're not making value judgment. We're talking about this is for the courts the to NDC make. The NDC says you made, you made some mistakes and what, that you shouldn't have the, made. What is the mistake? Huge. If, if somebody, I, I, I'm not sure if you are, you are following this objectively, but uh, otherwise what, what I'm seeing here is that I'm putting before you a set of facts. And I want you to, okay. to, to <clears throat> examine the fact I'm putting before you, not ask me subjective questions. Really, that doesn't advance the fact. I'm putting before you there was a contract signed or an agreement signed. And on signing that agreement, a legitimate document mm. procured from a legitimate institution, except the person allegedly now who signed the document uh, to mm. give weight to it, they don't have capacity. So that doesn't make now, the document oh, legitimate. Please, uh, just, just taking the facts. I am not. Going to take in if this document which was presented. I'm not sure what you're arguing. I, I, I'm telling you what has happened. Okay. Okay. So mm. if you're arguing with me telling you what has happened, I don't know where you are okay. going. I'm telling you that a document mm. given at the time okay. was seen face value mm. as legitimate document, but that was the first level. Mm. Second level, authorities are engaged in checking. You understand? And then found out as part of that checking process mm. that, no, this document admitted at the first level okay. has a problem. And so because it has a problem, we are going to suspend the, the, the contract. The, the, so this is part of a process. Okay. It's not an isolated event. The, the NDC is we, asking for you to terminate the concession immediately. Well, I mean, Will you, 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 heard, you heard yesterday the mm. minister talked about uh, a 30 day investigation that is uh, ongoing and it would involve all the stakeholders and the conclusion of that. At okay. this point, mm. you cannot allege, any, you cannot claim anything. Mm. We can only allege or suspect things that have done, uh, that has happened okay. uh, irregular to the okay. process. Okay. So upon that, the conclusion of that right. investigation, then we'll all be in a position to make a statement Thank definite you. to mm. say that this has happened and that has happened on account of which mm. a decision can be made. Thank you. Sweeney, why, why, why is your side breathing down the neck of, of government? And I hope you engage him just I, as much as you will, do. I will. Uh, why is your side breathing down the network of government they have explained time and again that look they have done as good they saw the anomaly they have suspended it they are investigating it and they will appropriately look at sanctions if it gets to that place and which there's no cause for alarm why are you agitated well um let me also say good morning to you and good morning to our viewers especially mm -hmm. the good people of the tamal enough uh, constituency um and let me also just um say that you don't have to engage me the way you engage him if there's no reason to. Mm. If I give you reason to, you'll be very much welcome. But <laughs> it doesn't have to be because you are engaged. Mm. You know, I have to also be engaged even if there's no need for that kind of engagement per my presentation. Mm. But I find it quite interesting that, as usual, uh, some new lexicon mm. is being introduced into our political discourse. Which is? And you, tem you tend to get that a lot when uh, these people are under pressure. You know, uh, continuous due diligence. Mm. I mean, mm. that's a new phrase <laughs> in, our, in our political, continuous mm. due diligence. Mm. I mean, I, I, I haven't really heard that before in contracting. What I always have heard is due diligence mm. must be done. Mm. And in fact, they had a good time talking about due diligence when they were in opposition and at no point did they ever mm -hmm. i think give you know um, an indication that due diligence can be so continuous to uh, the point that even within the contract mm -hmm. during the execution of the contract you mm -hmm. can still be doing due diligence but you know they think they are smarter and wiser than everyone of our, i mean everyone else so we can grant them that you know for me, it is disappointing. Um, it, is, it is so, so disappointing How so? that we never get the opportunity to finish discussing one scandal mm. before another breaks. Really? 
since this president assumed power, I find it so disappointing that we never get the opportunity to exhaustively discuss mm. one scandal before another. This breaks. is not and a see, scandal yet, is it? And you see, that is frightening. This is not a scandal yet, is what it? What is it? This is a scandal of international proportions with very dire consequences mm. to our image. The reputation of this country and the reputation of the power sector mm. is badly hit by this sort of, you know, um, um, cluelessness mm. and negligence exhibited by people, people in authority. How on earth can you want praise for handing over a national asset such as the ECG with a workforce of over 6,000 people mm. worth over 18 billion people to an institution that is... I mean, for, for that institution to run it for five months, mm. only for you to turn around and tell us that the guarantee, guarantee you, nothing complicated, guarantee that was used mm. was procured fraudulently. So I they mean, were, they were how, looking at it. how negligent, how clueless can you be if it takes you five months to verify a guarantee that people in private sector who are watching us today mm. know can be done in less than 48 hours? A guarantee. And what is even more shocking is that this so-called continuous due diligence that we are told mm. is what uncovered this is one other lie that, you know, they continue to, to peddle. The, the government says it's not a lie. They, they went ahead and found out on Al their own. Al-Qut wrote to the government of Ghana mm. to tell them they had nothing to do with the letter. Nobody solicited that letter from al -Qut. Mm. Who? Where is the letter the government of Ghana wrote to al -Qut to verify the authenticity of the guarantee? None so exists. They have shown none because it doesn't exist. Mm. So you have the, 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 the energy minister tell us that it was suspended because of fraud. Mm -hmm. The deputy minister tells us that just looks like a big scheme. Mm -hmm. Yet my brother still sits here and thinks this is an NDC matter, an NDC talk. You see, if they had listened to perhaps NDC advice earlier, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have gotten all of us, you know, in this mess that we find ourselves. Because when the matter first came to Parliament, mm -hmm. I recall, and I think at this point I must commend you know, our former Deputy Minister of Energy, John Ginapo. Mm. Power. I mean, you know, I think he was Energy. Yes, Energy. Yes, energy. Yeah. Really, and, really responsible for power, yes. right. Mm. I must commend him for that. And also the Herald newspaper, Larry Alans Dogbe, for also doing some very good job on this whole transaction. Mm. I mean, everything that is now considered fraudulent, that is now considered suspicious, mm. That even the finance minister himself mm. has written to a lawyer to try to rationalize mm. the share, uh, the share, you know, uh, uh, holding ar mm. uh, 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 arrangement, were all highlighted by either the Herald newspaper, mm. edited by Al Larry, or by John Ginapo. The information minister says if you have evidence to point uh, to some wrongdoing, bring your evidence. Don't just mouth it. Bring, bring paper. You see, who, who needs evidence when the minister comes to tell us that we have detected fraud? Is that not the minister of energy who is telling us that this contract has been suspended because they detected fraud? There's no need for, 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 for evidence. The minister, you see, if we tell you mm. that this thing looks suspicious, review it, mm. and you don't listen to us, and then five months down the line your minister comes to say we have suspended it because we have seen fraud what evidence do you want again right. your own minister mm. not the opposition minister because 
even have ministers. Because we cautioned you five months ago mm. that, look, this deal doesn't look good. Don't proceed with it. Mm -hmm. We cautioned. Re look, check, check the, 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 the companies that were hurriedly set up to, you know, take part in this consortium. Mm. We raise all those red flags. And we were ignored. We were brushed aside. Like my brother was seeking to still do. That is an NDC thing. It's politics. Now five months down the line, you come out to suspend the contract and indicate to us that you have detected fraud. And you still turn around and say, we shouldn't mouth it. We should bring evidence. I mean, what is logical about that? So you see, it is important mm. that for once, this government stops digging because they are in a big hole. They must man up, mm. be honest about the missteps that they took mm. that has led to this situation. Mm. And I'm sure when they do that, it will give us the assurance mm. that there is a mindset to correct what has gone they wrong. Will take, but if it you will continue, take 30 days to arrive at the conclusion you have arrived at already, uh, a conclusion that there was fraud, a conclusion that there, it would take 30 days to settle their doubts about everything. You see, there's a letter. The Minister of Energy has pointed to that letter. That the letter didn't come from the, you know, uh, institution with the authority that it was supposed to uh, have come from. Mm. End of matter. And for me, that is where, where when they say they have suspended the contract, I still find it ridiculous. And that is why yesterday at our press conference, mm -hmm. we said that we do not, we hope that some politicians are not going to use this whole revelation to appropriate these shares mm -hmm. behind closed doors. Because you see, what is important here is the fact that this fraud has been detected. Mm -hmm. And under law, we are told fraud vitiates all. Mm. Once you tell us there's fraud, you don't go suspending. You terminate. Fraud vitiates all. Mm -hmm. So it is not time for people to say we are suspending and then come uh, up later with some special purpose vehicle, mm -hmm. something, something, because we know mm -hmm. that all this is happening because of some bank, you know, boardroom wranglings. Really? And power, board you know, board yes, yes, between yes, who yes, and who. Yes, 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 yes. You see, we caution between, you know, th th we told you about the headdresses mm -hmm. who were involved and, uh, I mean, uh, Forgive me. The barbers who were involved and all. We told you, well, this is also a hairdresser. Mm. <laughs> we told you about all of that. The and, the, and, the in, and the interest that we found to be unholy. Mm. But you see, Johnny, what the people of Ghana need to understand in this Qu whole thing. Up, yes, I'm just mm -hmm. going to wrap up on that. Is, is, is how fast the Nana Kufuado government seemed to be destroying, you know, and, 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 causing a lot of retrogression mm. in almost every sector in this country. This was a compact that the NDC government secured mm. from the Millennium Challenge Corporation. Mm. It was supposed to go into energy sustainability. Mm. Now, so it was in line with our agenda of improving generation mm -hmm. capacity, you know, making fuel available, and also, you know, relieving the sector of the debts that was always a challenge mm. as far as the expansion of that sector is concerned. So we began the process of injecting private-public partnership mm. into the operations of ECG. Okay. Because if we were generating more mm. and we were also relieving the debt that was making the sector impossible to grow mm. and had also provided enough wealth through the Ghana gas, you needed the consumers to play their part mm. as much as the you know distributors mm. also playing their part so that you have that seamless relationship in that whole chain mm. to make the power sector tick. 
So we, in, we, we started considering this PPP <clears throat> arrangement. Now, if you recall, Dr. Baumia was one of the people who tweeted at the time mm -hmm. and indicated that that move was bad for ECG and bad for Ghana. And that if they came to power, they were not going to do it that way. Now, the president also, a different fora, mm -hmm. indicated that they were not in support of it. Yes, at the time, workers had some reservations mm -hmm. because the, the, the communication about how this was going to be done was not clear to them, and so they felt threatened by, you know, the talk uh, of uh, job uh, losses. Uh, yes, please. So we began this process, nonetheless, mm. engaging the workers. A selection process had started. Mm. That is to get institutions with the capacity okay. and with the financial muzzle mm. to take over ECG or partner ECG mm. to bring about that efficiency that the, we wanted. There were pullouts along the way. Fantastic. So the process started without pullouts. You had tier one companies, you had tier two companies involved. Now, there was change of government in 2016, unfortunately, mm -hmm. the MPP took over, and the process became so murky that the tier one and tier two companies all pulled out. BXC that went, you know, along, mm -hmm. despite all the, 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 the things, the reservations that they had with the processes, was eventually kicked out for some strange reasons of conflict of interest and all that. They were eventually kicked out, and that is when Miralco okay. was being promoted, and we all know the people who were behind are, Miralco. Are you, so this is a classical case of create, loot, and share. Are you surprised that, which has gone that, bad. that MIDA is not speaking? MIDA, which is the main intermediate, isn't speaking, they are silent. Again, I see some deliberate distortion when the media angle is introduced. Why not? You see, you have the Millennium Challenge Corporation, Corporation. Mm. which is the agency in the United States of America mm. that administered this compact right. in Africa. Mm. The first compact gave us, you know, the George Walker Bush route. Mm. It mm. was in agriculture and all of that. Right. Now, this compact was into energy. But in the countries that the MCC operates, mm. The home countries are expected to set up, you know, their own institutions mm. that the MCC will work through. Okay. So MIDA is not a U.S. agency. Mm. MIDA is actually a Ghana government organization mm. set up by an act of parliament. And the person who is in charge of MIDA today, I'm told, has his office at the Flagstaff House. The, the, yesterday, it was, it was denied uh, by... Well... Mm. I, I, I don't know, but I've heard the but office. Are you but surprised that what they are I not know, speaking? But what I am not surprised because, you see, this was a government scheme mm. spearheaded by some big people in government which, or close to it. People? Which big people? Oh. Hughes, I don't the, think they're enabling wait, 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 this Which big people? The, the, we, we know the promoters of the, of the, of the, of the company. We know them. We know their relationships with the, with, the, with, the, with the powers that be in this country. In fact, some of them have indicated why they invited some people to also be shareholders because of their relationships. So it is, okay. it is the, 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 the evidence it is out there mm. that this, is, this was a grand scheme okay. to you. create and loot and you. share, uh, Richard, but has, uh, it has just gone bad. Richard, there the are calls for an independent committee to be set and not for government to be investigating uh, what it has led us into. Do you support that call, that we have an independent body? For example, people are asking for the special prosecutor to take this up and run with it and not government itself setting up a high-power delegation to go to Qatar and come back and tell us in 30 days what they have found. What do you say to that? Look, Hughes, um, we have a fever-high climate mm? Mm. underwritten by the NDC, hyper in search of something to talk about. That's why we're here. Mm -hmm. Government has not led us into anything. Okay. In contract law, at the risk of sounding mm -hmm. a lawyer, which I am not, mm -hmm. there is inherent mm, understanding of continuous diligence, which my brother says he, does, he has no in, idea about. In the basic contract, you have offer, there's consideration. No, I'm not even talking about I'm talking about the acceptance. spirit of contract. But I'm saying that, that underlining... It, that the two parties are supposed <laughs> to act in good faith. Yes, but underlining it, there is offer... I'll, allow me to yeah. make my point. Consideration. Yeah. Yeah. 
acceptance I'm not talking and your about the architecture the and everything. Once you I'm accept, you don't oh, go back to I'm constitution. Sorry. I'm yes. sorry. Once yes. you accept, you allow don't me. go back to allow constitution. Me. Okay, so you say you don't allow know, me. so allow, allow me to say. <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm providing information that <laughs> no, no. the basic principle for every contract I'm not even going into that, that detail. You, I'm only telling you. make you. me an offer. I consider the offer. Mm -hmm. I accept the offer. Yeah. And then I will look at whether or not I am able to deliver. That's part of the consideration process. So once you accept my, you see, you are interrupting offer. me again no, when no, no, I'm supposed no, no, I understand I'm that part. That. I understand. <laughs> but what I'm trying to tell you is that in that offer exchange and acceptance, there is inherent understanding that you are acting in good faith. Okay. That you are not misrepresenting any of the information you are giving me as part of your offer. Mm. So that as part of the contract execution, if I find out that any of the information you gave me, which induced me to enter the contract, mm. if those were misrepresented, it's basis to nullify the agreement. Mm. You understand? Mm. Okay. Now, how do you ascertain that the information you gave uh, was false misrepresentation? That's the phase we are in. So in that contract structure, mm -hmm. there's an understanding that at any point in time, I can find something wrong or everything will be okay with the ag agreement we have signed. Mm -hmm. And we're telling you that when that PDS agreement was signed, that spirit mm -hmm. was alive and mm -hmm. the agencies of state were acting to see that we have just handed over critical state assets mm -hmm. to this in, uh, company and they are working on it. And we are interested in ensuring that everything they told us from the outset mm -hmm. is true mm -hmm. and remains true. Mm -hmm. So that diligence and search was ongoing. Okay. And that was what led us to the point where we're saying that all could not be well with this letter when we have suspected that may have been procured fraudulently. At what point was the mistrust no, identified? You, you, uh, um, Hughes, allow me. So I can't, if, ask, I can't ask a question. No, the question you're way. asking me, if you just listen, you'll get to that answer. You understand? Now, following on that checks, mm -hmm. we have come to a point which, when we came to that, the minister of it for information issue that yes we have reason to suspect mm. that something is wrong mm. something is amiss so therefore we're suspending this okay if you tell the story as happened and as i'm telling you you should understand unless you live in a climate where some individuals everything that happens they want to find I'm bad saying, with it. at what point was this mistrust identified i just told you a situation you where to you say, should be suspect. suspicious in every situation Okay. In a contract, that's why implicit in a the contract, there is the understanding that you are acting in good faith. Okay. So, but I should be aware to check all time to see that are you truly acting in good what, faith? What we stand to so, lose? What we so stand to lose? That, 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 see, listen. What do we stand to lose? Let's not go back. What do we? We're stand not going to back. I'm trying to let you understand because this whole thing has been this. Because you hear him go back to Morocco and everything else that has happened before. We are at a specific point. Okay. The the, the challenge before us mm. is what we're talking and about. And the challenge before and then, us presents us two options. Either we continue or discontinue. And that's what I just told and you I'm before. And I'm saying, if we discontinue, Johnny, what do we stand to Johnny, lose? Johnny, you know, you know. See, some of the times when you ask a question, if you have the answer, you don't ask the same question. No, I don't know. You understand? Know. I don't know. That's yeah, what I've happened. told you that already. Okay. That what, at this point, we are doing is to investigate. You understand? Now, you know the lawyers will deal with it once we establish that that document was procured fraudulently. And you understand, as we talked about the contrast situations, mm. to say that you are expected to be truthful. Okay. So if you give wrong information, you misrepresent your position to me mm. to enter into a contract with you, and as a result of that, uh, I lost something, then the court will determine okay. what we gain or what we lose in the matter. Okay. That is not for us to discuss. Aqua, Aqua but what we are discussing on oh, no, place, let, 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 let's a focus on the, Let me finish, please. Let me finish. Let's focus on this matter. Let's not be moving up and down. No, I'm asking questions. I can't ask questions on my own show. No, you can But then you, you don't allow me to finish. You let me establish for you. And you understand. You understand okay. what I'm trying to tell One, you now? I understand. Okay. Mm. So if you understand, so, then it gets so, us to a point where we see clearly mm. what the NDC is doing. No, you're, trying you're, you're, to I have think, I think you are too interested in pointing, NDC. you know, to NDC. NDC. Tell me, ah. uh, so you hold on for me. So, what, what do you so, mean I'm interested in pointing? I'm sitting here well, with but, an NDC person, well, you're telling me I'm interested. But that's what you're being doing. You are, 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 you allow me, please. No, you have a guy tell me or tell us on this show that this is a classic case of create, loot, and share. And you are asking me that I'm interested in pointing to him. 
Why don't you ask him why is he talking about great loot and shit? Because, because the evidence is, because no, he the evidence is he he Allow me to defend my party. You ask okay. questions. So, so <laughs> it's, about, it's about, about party. It's not about the nation. No, no. Please, Johnny. Okay, you ask your question. Because, okay. you see, I don't know really what you're trying to achieve. But the point I'm trying to make is this. This issue is very clear and clear-cut. What we are engaged in is trying to protect the public purse. Okay. And in fact, ASAP, mm, independently, who have been very independent in all of this discussion, mm. has gone on to commend government for the swift reaction to this matter. Now, if you're objectively assessing what has happened today, okay. uh, there is no way you, even Johnny, you'll be confused about this. Because you, if you sign a contract with somebody mm. and you found out that the person has done wrong, okay. mm, mm. and you are going to tell the person to cancel the contract, what is the ambiguity about that? So that's what he said, fraud vitiates all. He said that. Yes, yes. Okay. But so then, so but now, then, now but that then we have settled. Now, to establish now that we have settled that, no, let's please. move on. We don't, no. have, we don't have a lot of time. But you are the one interrupting. I beg you. So, let, let me quickly Hughes, put let this. Me let me say, on, on account of fraud vitiates all, mm. right? Mm. But you, you do have to establish that indeed that is fraud. Okay. Right? So which is the 30 which day is what, Which is the But how much is it costing us to do the 30 day scan? What? To agree on you disagree. asked me that question before. Yes, I'm asking. But since I'm you, asking are, you, since you are interested, mm. since you are interested, this is a situation of law, okay, and a pot potential breach of law. When the evidence establishes that in fact there was misrepresentation in the contract that led Ghana to handing over assets to them, then I think in court we'll deal with the damages we suffer. If, and if, if, if the company if, will if have no to compensate us, if no wrongdoing is identified, we bear the costs. Of hypothetical. A wild, of a I, I, I'm chase. not in a position to okay. answer a hypothetical so, question. Quick, quick one, and, and I'll come to Suhini because we're wrapping up shortly. Some say that we had the example of Aqua Vitens run, mm. and we gave Ghana Water Company to them, and we, it had to revert to Ghana Water Company at some point because what we were seeking for them to do, we couldn't achieve. And that was an example and a template that we could have followed in this matter, PDS ECG. Mm. Couldn't we have looked on that template to arrive at, you know, and, and save ourselves from some of some of these things that we find ourselves in now? Yes, you see, um, you you learn from experience, and this is an experience that we are we are going through. And I I guarantee you that one thing we're learning from this is that what we did by continuously focusing and following this agreement is one good experience we must continue to learn okay. and must continue to have as a country that we cannot take every agreement or take people who come to sign agreement with us as people who are acting so in good faith all the time. This is, yes, that should become part of our state architecture okay. to say that when we sign contract with anybody to do anything, we must persist and follow. In fact, the Minister of Energy was mm -hmm. very clear when, the, I think on the handing over day, mm -hmm. talked about the government will follow mm -hmm. to ensure PDS delivers on the KPIs. Okay. And if they fail or deviate, okay. we will not hesitate to suspend so, the agreement. So and I think that has brought us here, mm -hmm. that government was engaged, and we are now at the point mm -hmm. where we are demanding that the right thing, per the contract, be, uh, the okay. agreement be executed. So if the findings suggest mm -hmm. something is, is going to miss, the government will not relent. Uh, okay. in the effort to pursue justice so, for the so, Ghanaian so really, people. The, the argument also is that uh, now that uh, power distributions come back to e ECG, uh, ECG, the, the whole board and leadership of ECG should be wiped and reconstituted. What do you say, quickly? Well, um, it is one of the demands that we made yesterday, that it must be reconstituted uh, to reflect the vision that we have for that institution. But you see, my brother made some points that I'll just uh, uh, clear, quickly. you know, as clarify as we uh, wrap up. First of, yeah, first of all, he talks about, you know, fraudulent letters signed to appoint people. That happened under this Nana Kufuado government, and I can give him the names. Again, under President Kufu, Mr. Bruni, we're told, after investigations, forged the president's letter to bring in cars. None, none of that sort happened mm -hmm. under the NDC. So maybe he got his, you know, memory all mixed up. But 
what we are faced with. That's not fair. Sorry. What we are faced with. So, what, so, no, so that's so what you got to do. That is extremely you see, personal. What, I don't think. What, I don't what think, we are faced with. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm saying uh, that. No, no, no. It's not an issue. No, no, no. Respectfully. I apologize. I want you to. I apologize. If you take it. If you take it. I'm just saying, you see, sometimes when you try to recall things and then it mixes up. It's not a better way to say that to say. You got the memory mixed up. I'm sorry about that. Do you accept the apology? But you see, but you see, Johnny, because we are we are we are in a in a hurry to wrap right. up, I just want to reiterate the point that this government is so scandal prone that it is so disappointing that we are never able to finish one scandal before another see, breaks. You are remember the Ameri that, that this is remember, a scandal. Remember the Ameri remember, remember the Ameri that your government please, says is please, not a remember, you can't remember be, you the Ameri remember the Ameri and what happened to Ameri and how a minister okay. had to be made yeah, to you go. Can't have your own the the, the, to go. the finance you very minister much, recently yeah, just the came to tell us about how the power sector is now set for constituency uh, of the um, NDC and Mr. Richard Ahagba is a Deputy Communications Director of the, the MPP. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. And this is not to say that we are saying this is fraudulent. It is a claim that we made government said is investigating the for 30 days. Um, the, or some wrongdoing has been identified. Well, keep the conversation ongoing. But whatever it is, after 30 days, we will get to know and hopefully we'll get to know how much it's costing us to do continuous due diligence. And even for the 30-day period that we're trying to find out whether or not some wrongdoing was done. Stay with us when we'll be right back.